Doug Smith, joined by Will Lowry, back at it again for another episode of Beyond the Fairway Podcast. Hey, if you haven't heard Beyond the Fairway, we bring a point of view from a completely different clubhouse, and you already know what we do. Hey, we take you beyond the scores and the highlights to discuss the game of golf and its barriers for minorities and this emerging new culture. Hey, coming up on this week, hey, Will and I are talking WGC Dell Technologies match play, discuss the development of the John Shippen National Invitational, and our favorite, favorite guest, and you know who it is, Will, it's the homie. It's the homie Ben from Chris Y'all's coming in here. Hey, is he going to be on time, man? You know, Ben got his own situation, so I don't know if yeah. he's going to be I mean, it's, where it's, he's supposed to be at. I, I, I think the CPT time definitely applies to him. I, yeah, I, it's, I exactly. And, and for the for the <laughs> Caucasians that do enjoy our show, that is colored people time. So yeah, that I, CP time is definitely something that Ben's got to overcome as we do too. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. I was I was hoping people wouldn't think it was Caucasian people time. It was, no, it's not. No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Will, man, what's up? Where, what's what's going on, man? How was your weekend? Let's talk about it. Let's get into it a little bit, man. It it was good, man. You know, it was good. It got got some uh got some golf in and and you know played. Well, I went to the range. Try to figure some. I'm jealous out. you get to play so much golf, man. I'm so. Well, I don't, I don't know. Like, I'm, what it's worse when you play a lot of golf and you still can't figure it out. So mm. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know which one's worse, man. Not playing and trying to play, then putting time in and not figuring it out. So it was a cornucopia of emotions this weekend. <laughs> a cornucopia. Hey, talking about a cornucopia of emotions. Hey, Billy Horschel took the yes. championship hey you know it's funny like as i look at match play from the american vantage point we really don't play a lot of match play events compared to the europeans and different countries around the world so when i see like an american like last or year before last you know dell technologies was canceled uh last year due to COVID. uh previous year 19 kevin kisner was able to take that championship but when i see kevin kisner and i see matt kuchar and i see now billy horse will add his name to the list of champions there at the the dell match play it's like you know What's going on in America, Will, where our guys really aren't prepared to play the Ryder Cup, the President's Cup style events? I mean, I, I think, you know, I think we're so used to the stroke play. Because we got to think about stroke play and match play are totally two different, you know, ways of golf. You know, you, you stroke play, yes, you're, you're playing against, you have, you have um, different elements. You know, you have the course, you have... Uh, uh, on occasion, you may have the person. That's usually depends on the last nine holes of the tournament. But when you have match play, you got people trying to hit you in the mouth immediately. Immediately, first, off top. First Coming in hot box. and spicy. And, and the thing about it, you know, going back to the Dell uh, match play this week, you know, this is probably one of the first times I can say that uh, element was probably a bigger factor than the actual player. You know, playing the 43 mile per hour wins. Mm. I mean, it was, it yep. was, it was pretty. Uh, it was almost to the point to where, hey, I'm not worried about you. I'm worried about this weather, and then I'm gonna worry about you. And that's not always the case when it comes to the match play. You know, it's funny. Like for those that really don't understand the concept of match play, match play is a format in golf where you're actually playing against your opponent. Now, it may seem like in stroke play and all the other tour events you see Monday through Friday, Monday through Friday, Thursday through Sunday, that you know it's a it's a you know, whoever makes the lowest score. But in match play, you're not playing the entire field. It's you versus me. We're going to play this hole. If I make a birdie, you make a par. I won the hole. I go one up. So effectively, so, each hole is only worth one point. But so, so let me ask you this question. So do you think if there were to be a fifth major, what's your thoughts on match play being the fifth major format? I, I think it's asinine i don't i mean I, you what? gotta understand i'm a traditionalist there's no is there a place for match play championships yes Do i appreciate that it's during march madness and they have the dell technologies match play absolutely but to say that a match play event should add its name next to the masters the u.s open the open championship and uh the pga championship i don't know will i don't know because at the same time you talk about a fifth major what about the players that's a fifth major already well, that's a un, that's a that's an unsung fifth major, it's an untitled fifth major. I'm talking about official fifth major as having a match play. I mean, you see, I'm, all not, you, well, I'm it, not feeling. What, I mean, the, I think that's the truest form of golf is match play. I mean, it's it's I don't think about with that. it, huh? It's a, it's I, a I don't form. disagree. Okay, but but think about it is by being a truest form of golf, you I think that's the only time you really get to see the grunt, the 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 gut of the person, the 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 chutzpah. 
There you, you know, go. What's, what's it? What's in? I love the word. It's the greatest word ever. But uh, I just think you get to see the the what's what's inside the, the person, the heart of the person, that dog in them. And yeah, I mean, no, I, I'm, I'm not saying dog. that you're not gonna see like that grind mode. Like you know what I mean? Like when it. But I tell you what I did miss, and it's funny because Zinger and uh, made mention of this during uh, the, uh, the the telecast. He and uh, uh, David Faraday, they talked about the lack of the gamesmanship that was left out of this year's match play championship and gamesmanship is just when you make a putt a person in match play address the putt that might be four feet and then you give it to them after they 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 you know after they've addressed the ball just to piss them off or to jingle some change or to, or to walk across their line standing they through i didn't see none of the fun stuff that i like to see in match play i want to see some of that shit talking like yo i'm about to bust you in the head type no it was so cordial it was almost yeah. boring so shout yeah. out to zinger for actually saying something man. yeah it, it it was it was a little different man you know even going to um, the winner of uh, this year match play, Billy Horshow. You know, I, I mean, I mean, we can kind of go backwards, but the finals of this of this tournament was, you know, not that exciting. It was a pillow fight, you know. <laughs> and, and come and on, man, the, I was it, hey, it, I agree. But, but it was a form of pillow fight, and given the fact that previous, I mean, the previous uh, matches early in the year or early in the week. You know, uh, majority of them went to went down to the seventeenth, eighteenth hole, and you know it, it was a it was a pillow fight. But that's the gamble you get when you have match play. So that yeah. could be a little tough. So that's that probably be a negative with it being a major. I think through like fifteen holes, nobody had won a putt with a bird, or nobody had won a hole putting and making a birdie. Facts. I think Horschel chipped in early in the round, and that was like the only time. Other than that, it was pars and bogey. So I do believe that you are correct in your assessment, Will, that, hey, look, this wasn't the most exciting television. I kind of caught myself kind of drifting off. But it is match play. You know, it again, is. it's you versus me. It's not the course, right. but the conditions down there in Austin played a huge factor in, in what we saw. We saw, like you said, wind gusts going up to 48 miles an hour. We saw Scotty Scheffler hit some shots in the water. But I tell you what. You talk about shanks of the week. Did you see the like top snap hook draw? I don't even know what it was that Billy decided to hit yesterday. It was like he wanted to hit a punch shot low and then it, it quit. The lower body didn't turn and this the ball went way left and the and his opponent, it was in the first round against Victor Perez, it was like, Oh, you almost dude, you almost hit me with a ball, bro. Like you're yeah. supposed to be a professional. Oh, well, I mean, well, I mean, you know, you always like defend the person. It was a a, a snap hook or a drill draw. So I don't know. I, we 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 gonna all the way have the debate about that. But yeah, I mean, it, you know, Billy. Hurt, yes, he did. I did see that shot uh, <laughs> actually. But uh, and you were right. It was a snap draw. Whatever. It, it was a snap but, dragon. Top thing, thing, thing about it. Think about it though. You know, <laughs> Billy got it done this week. You know, he took out some amazing opponents. Uh, he beat uh, Max Homa, who won the Genesis. Took out Colin Morikawa. Who uh, who beat him what? just a few weeks earlier in the uh, WGC yep. workday at uh, concessions, and you know that had to be a little bit of a you, you know euphoria get back moment, and you know took out Kevin Streelman, beat uh, um, Tommy Fleetwood. So yeah, I he mean, beat some people. I, I, he knocked the people, people out. And, and, he you know, won the one too. And it, it's a beautiful part. Is it kind of has me thinking. You know, when you think about the you know March Madness, when you talk about hooping, you know, you, you when you get down to the final four, the final two, you want to see. Who had these teams beaten? And when you look at look back at Billy Horschel's, uh, I guess, look at his resume. championship <laughs> resume, you know, it's pretty impressive, man. You know, I mean, you got to think he started he started a week outside of uh, top thirty. Now he's in the top twenty. So I'm proud of the guy. He could be our master pick, and and um, it's unfortunate that Patrick Cantley, Patrick Cantley, shot uh, thirteen under for three days. You know, and and that, and he he didn't crack the. No, he didn't crack nothing. Hey, look, not any no player like inside the top thirty even made it near the semifinals. That's right. what I find. Look, John, I think John Rahm was the only player that went on to to compete. But look, big week, Will. Big week here. We got the first major, the first major of the year, and the ANA inspiration coming up on the LPGA tour and the Augusta National Women's Amateur Championship this week. Uh, one of my favorite weeks in golf, you know, I enjoy seeing the ladies. And then on Sunday, we got drive, chip, and putt. So everything will, everything is kind of starting to, starting to be April. I'm waiting yes. for Jim Nance's voice to say hello, yes. friends. 
The azaleas are starting to bloom. They're putting ice yes. down on the flowers at Augusta. Hey, are you ready for all of this Augusta National that's coming our way here in the next few weeks? Well, now, now the golf season officially starts. <laughs> that's it, for it, real. It, 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 does not, it, it, it does not start until I get my, I hear my gym man's voice. Uh, that's the, and that's, that's the time where I really want to be in the house. I want to catch every, every morsel of greenery around the Augusta, Augusta, uh, campus, Augusta premises. And, um, I, I can't wait. So I, I know, I know golf is about to start and now, uh, we're about to get into the thick of things. So, uh, it's going to be an exciting year. No, this is interesting. So I was talking to, uh, to Cheyenne Woods a couple of days ago, brought me up to speed on some information. Well, I didn't know. I really didn't know this. So you I just found something? out. Yeah, she just put me on game. So, but I, yeah. I, I want to get your take on it because I, I find it interesting. And I didn't know this, and f shame on me. So, did you know that the Augusta National Women's Amateur is contested at a, a off-site course, and then they take a day off, and then they have the championship round at Augusta a day after play has been suspended. So, if you do play uh, in the Augusta National Women's Amateur. You only might get to play Augusta one time if you miss the cut because only the top 30 players are going on to play at Augusta. And I think, in my opinion, it's just me. I think that's some BS, man. I feel like play the whole championship over at Augusta, man. They grow grass faster than anybody in the country. They know how they, they got <laughs> sub air under the greens. Let them right. women play or girls play four, three rounds of golf at Augusta National, man. That's I think I think that's I appreciate yeah. the effort. But I think so, that's that's a shortfall. Ben from Crenshaw is in the building. Mr. Yeah. Crenshaw, what's up, man? Where, what's, you, you, um, it's a good time to, to floss, apparently. All right, my grandmother made this uh, sweet potato pie and the crust. I, she, like, she don't cook it like she used to, you know what I'm saying? So sometimes the crust get in my teeth. Actually, <laughs> okay. I'm lying. I just wanted to show you, uh, I was picking my teeth with these matches that I got at Augusta. <laughs> So, hey, so oh, hold on, hold on, oh, hold on, Ben, hold on, Ben. Y'all recognize the logo, right? That's Augusta. I do, but Ben, did you wear all red to Augusta? Were you the first blood playing on Augusta grounds? Uh, uh, unless Suge Knight played Augusta, uh, I would, <laughs> and I don't think so. Ben, what other memorabilia did you happen to uh, procure while you were on the grounds of Augusta National? Um, what's the statute of limitations with stealing? Uh, okay, I, well, Georgia is different. I don't know, bro. <laughs> no, it wasn't really stealing per se. Like we took a tour, and um, like the press, they they keep these. The press got they get scorecards and stuff, so they can you know track the, the tournament. So right. I got one of these. Oh heaven! So I can track, but uh, but you know, I can't really use it because I probably won't be able to go back to Augusta. But yeah. <laughs> Uh, I'm just going to just cross out Masters and wherever course I be on, that's what it's going to be. So <laughs> let's just say uh, I am at Pebble. Boom. I'm just going to go P-E-B-B-L-E. -E. Boom. <laughs> now it's not Augusta. It's Pebble. There it I is. I was going to make some adjustments on the yardage because not all courses is going to start off with a par four with 445. So, yeah. Pebble, well, I remember, it's three seventy five. Especially, especially, so. especially uh, Chester, Washington. You, if you bring that to Chester, Washington, you really. Be I don't, I don't really. Again. I don't really. You know. <sighs> how can I put this? Like, I don't go there no more. You know what I'm saying? Once you. Hey, if you playing at Augusta, you don't need to go to Chester, yeah, Washington no more. You got money now. Exactly, light skin dude. Once you taste <laughs> the finer things in life, <sighs> why? You know, I drive by there, you know, and and I, I say what's up, and they like you ain't gonna play. I'm like. <laughs> You, you do know where I've been, right? And, and they, they not, they, I think they want to fight me. You know what I mean? Just because of my travels. So I don't, you know. <laughs> hey, so being there. the gangster that you are, though, Ben, like when you, how how did you feel driving down that Magnolia Lane, man, with, with trees and in the clubhouse? Was it was it like everybody say it is and magical and, and all of that? Yeah, I, I shed a tear. You know what I mean? I, I was like, you know, this is, and then when you see the caddies, right? There's a lot of black caddies out there. And uh, they're not allowed to talk to the other black people, but uh, I got a chance to like, you know, go around and be like, yo, y'all good, y'all need anything? And they like, we hungry. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. Every, they treat everybody fair. Uh, uh, the justice system works uh, in the Augusta uh, facilities. 
<laughs> and uh, <laughs> you got me laughing because uh, it was some very, it was some peculiar characters that work uh, in the cave. Is it system? How you used to work? Yard you? in the yard. It's a yard. <laughs> the yard. It's the like, yard. Like, you used to the yard, like, ain't you? Like man? jail. Yeah. You used to the yard, huh? First of all, I've been to jail, not prison. Okay, so let's make sure we distinguish a couple of days versus a couple of months. Okay. Hey Ben, did you see anybody getting ready for this week's um uh Augusta National Women's Amateur while you were on property? You know, it's a big week. We got the ANA Inspiration, golf's first major. We got the Augusta National Women's Amateur coming up, man. Any any advice for those ladies going down there or what what's up? Uh, okay, well, I would say I didn't see none. You know, I heard they was coming. You know, because I had to get in and out because, uh, you know, I wasn't really supposed to be there. Uh, <laughs> but I know I was a little nervous on hole one. So what I did is I just aimed dead left, right? I aimed dead left. I played this. People would call it a slice. I think it's a power fade. Okay. And so uh, it allowed me to have all of this fairway instead of only this much fairway. See, when you, you aim over there, you got all this. But if you aim straight, you're going to only have all this. So I just, <laughs> hey, play to your weaknesses. <laughs> play to your weaknesses. Oh, that's, that's play your weaknesses. Like, if you know you slice, aim that bitch to the left. <laughs> if you a hooker, aim that bitch to the right. <laughs> Hey, so I want to give you a If you ain't good out the sand, if ain't nobody looking, take it out the sand. But <laughs> just know you're going to be penalized. But don't be embarrassed <laughs> in the sand. <laughs> just say, listen, hey, y'all, I ain't really that good out the sand, so I'm going to take a drop. Boom. <laughs> yeah, hey, that's that. it. Hey, hey, Ben, look, we got to wrap. But, man, yeah. as always, we appreciate you, you stopping by on here. On top of the dome, or you want me to something I wrote? I got, like, a lot of stuff that I already wrote. No, 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 we gotta rap. We gotta we gotta go rap. I got a gang of stuff. Boom. Got- uh Eagle on my ass. Uh <laughs> ain't no fun if your homie ain't in the lake. Uh it might got no windy. rhyme to it, Will. It's it just all just <laughs> what's I, that one? I see wind, I see bogey. It's a whole bunch of, so next the time I'm maybe Oh, next, those are song hey, titles. Oh, yeah, yeah. Song yes. titles, yeah. Oh, yeah. okay. I thought they was like the intro to your your bar nah. that you're not finishing. Okay, my bad. So oh, so you bad. so you and you and Macklemore definitely needs to have a rap battle on a fairway. He was like getting hey, my last Once week. I finish battling Macklemore, he'll be Macklemore-less. <laughs> <laughs> hey, well, there you have it. Ben from Crenshaw. Be sure you go follow yeah. Ben on Instagram, Ben from at Ben from Crenshaw. Yes, hey man, we appreciate you, man. Tell Chris we said what's up, man. Hey Chris, <laughs> light skinned dude and the the, the the Jamaican with the dress, but he don't have no accent. They say what's up. <laughs> Whoop is the world's most powerful fitness wearable that provides twenty four seven actionable sleep training and recovery insights to help you know yourself and your body's needs. Hey, each day it measures how well you slept, how well you recovered, and how much stress you put on your body from both your workouts and going about your everyday life. Will, hey, what up, whoop? Hey, whoop, there it is, bro. There it is, that's all Hey, man, hey, how's it, look, I've been wearing this thing for like, I don't know, almost two months, man, and I, f- I find it very, very interesting, kind of the stats and the numbers that I'm getting, especially yeah. in regards to sleep. Because, you know, I thought I was rested getting up for the days and stuff, doing my thing, especially with Lil Rincey. But look, I at first, I wasn't sleeping very good, dog. I'm going to tell you right, right now. Right, right, right. It's so funny when I talk to uh, fellow uh, whoop. Spurs, I guess, so to speak. I Whoopers? ask them all the time. I, whoopers, yeah. I ask them like, <laughs> like, so what is it? What is it? What what type of guy are you? The are you care about more the recovery guy or are you the steps guy? And I'm like, you know. So then I had to ask myself that question. I am a strain guy. Recovery is cool. Sleep is cool. But I really care how much I am stressed <laughs> throughout my uh, throughout my tenure of holding this, of having this thing on my wrist. So I, I'm just I just that's all I care about, man. So it kind of makes you wonder what's going to happen in the Masters this this weekend. You know, who's going to get the most sleep to be successful? I tell you what, how I use it, Will. You talk about you use it for strength. I use it for sleep because once I see my sleep numbers, it kind of tells me what I can do that day, right? So and then for me, 
I had one night where I was like, you need 10 and a half hours of sleep, bro, if you're going to have the day that you want to have. And I was like, oh, man. Like, damn, whoop. Like, she's talking to me. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, damn, homie. Like, I don't know if I can I don't know if I can be in the bed for 10 and a half hours. But, you know, it's, you know what's exciting, though, is the graphics, right? When you do get some yeah. sleep and that ring turn green, you be yeah. like, let's go. Right. Damn it, I'm, I'm ready. One, I, I did it. I did it right. And then, and then once I do it, I was like, all right, what did I just do? But I like results, you know. So hey, yeah, or it's, vice it's, versa. You ever like wake up and you like, oh shoot, man, I gotta freak. Oh man, I'm tired. And then you look at your numbers, it's like it supports oh, shit, it. I got green. I had a green night. Oh damn, I'm actually way more ready for this day than I thought. Hey, look, man, I'm excited to wear this whoop, man. Whoop, you know the official uh, fitness tracker of Beyond the Fairway and the PGA Tour. Hey, we got some synergy there, Will. Hey, with yes. spring right around the corner, Will, it's time to dust off those clubs, and Whoop is a great way to optimize your game on and off the golf course. Right now, Whoop is offering 15% when you use the code BEYOND at checkout. Hey, go to Whoop, which is Whoop.com, and enter B-E-Y-O-N-D, BEYOND at checkout, 15% off from Will and I. You're welcome. Join our, our Whooper gang. What's up? That's what it is. Hey, Will, something that was announced last week that I'm really excited to hear about, and uh, we're going to have to try to pull some strings and make sure we're included. Plug, just so y'all hear me. The John Shippen Invitational uh, presented by Rocket Mortgage. Um, if you haven't heard, it is golf's newest effort to create a level playing field for uh, black and brown folk here in the game of golf. The John Shippen Invitational will be a invite-only qualifier uh, invited men and women, uh, both professional, where they will host everybody, bring them in, flights, practice rounds, hotel accommodations will be there for the taking. Um, and you're going to get a chance to play in the Rocket Mortgage Classic there at Detroit Golf Club, Will. Big announcement, huge announcement for the John Shippen and, and, and Minority Golf. So I, I'm excited about this, man. This is this is something that I think um, is needed. Well, it is. Damn sure needed. It is. I mean, what, and, and don't forget the uh, the women's. There's a women's event that's being held uh, separately uh, as well. Then the winner of the women's event um, will get into the LPGA Dow Great Lakes Bay Invitational. Mm. So, yeah, so obviously that's that's a good event in itself. Uh, so promoting growth, pro promoting opportunity. And I think, man, like I said, it's, it's needed. Uh, I believe it can kind of maybe quell some of the talk regarding you know some of these exemptions shouldn't be extended to african americans because they're quote unquote not ready um but i think i think this is good and the thing about it they're kind of really tackling the whole ecosystem of golf and I also read that they also addressing the lack of uh black representation uh when it comes to um uh leaders in the game of golf as yeah, well in the so industry the, mm -hmm. in the industry so they're, they're really covering all aspects around the yep. uh, and the golf and, and I, I like to see what they're doing. I love it. Hopefully we. Can I just want to know how we're gonna be a part of it. You know what I'm saying? Let's let's right, hold on right. now. We right. let's, let's 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 get it out in the open. I would like to formally apply for an invitation <laughs> to the John Shippen Invitational. Feel free to slide in the DMs. Uh, hit up NBC. Let Will and I play. Let Absolutely. I'm gonna make a sign. Is let me play. But right. <laughs> <laughs> are there more deserving people? Absolutely. But can I still Hell bust yeah. some people in the ass? Absolutely. So look, let's just yes. let's get make sure we got that out in the open. <laughs> um, but Will, what I what I, this is this is the thing that gets me, right? Let me get comfortable in my in my seat because get comfortable. as we saw with Willie Mack, Kamayu Johnson, and others that did get uh, exemptions to play in PGA Tour sanctioned event. The haters are out there, Will. There are going to be so many people that don't want this to happen, just like we saw with Kamayu Johnson getting his three events, Willie Mack getting two. We just saw Trey Valentine get into the club car on the Corn Ferry, as well as uh, Tim O'Neill had a sponsor's exemption into the, the club car as well. Will, what is the reaction going to be when the larger white constituency sees that blacks have yet another event? I don't know. Well, let me tell you what I do know. There are going to be some very upset, hating people coming out of everywhere to say, why are we still doing this? Why why, are, why do black people still need this this affirmative action uh, within the game of golf? And and what's your response to that? Because it's coming. I mean, I mean it's, it's coming, but you got to think. Anything that happens, you can always find a way to uh, be somewhat of a pessimist about it. And obviously we know that's coming. You know, we've seen what uh, previous 
previous uh, comments uh, regarding, you know, the previous people you just mentioned that received exemptions. So, I mean, it's coming. I, I think I, I'm hoping, I'm hoping it can be a bit of a uh, relief to hear that it's not a hand pick winner. These individuals are going out and, and uh, playing their way into the event. So I, I'm, I'm hoping that can have somewhat of a positive response. But uh, I mean, I'm, I'm ready for it. I'm ready to defend everybody. I'm ready to, to get my, my messaging, my Twitter fingers going and, and uh, bring it on. But I mean, personally, between you and I, I, I think this is a good thing as well. So yeah, and everybody else listening, between you yeah. and I and everybody yeah, between, else. Right. <laughs> well, the thing is, it's like when we, when we saw Willie get in, we saw Kamayu get into events. We've even heard on various podcasts just all the hate, just the spew that's come out from people's uh, mouths regarding the handouts and players being not ready. Well, you know what? They didn't know they weren't ready till they had the opportunity. So now they know. Like, it's not something that you can just say, I'm not ready for it, right? I, how do you know you're not prepared until you get in the mix, right? right. Uh, or or not in the mix in certain people's cases. But right. I I appreciate the the qualifier, yeah. right? Because yes, you will get a chance to compete to earn something, and I hope the message that is received by the masses is that this is an opportunity that will be earned. Now, the criteria. There is a committee that's been uh, assembled there by Intersports, uh, as well as a couple of organizations affiliated with the championship and Rocket Mortgage, of course. But what I want to know, Will, is what criteria is going to allow these players to be picked? Because not every black golfer competes on the Advocates Tour. Okay, so if you're looking, is this going to be an advocates like, okay, there's these players that, that have played this way on the advocates, let's pick them out. But what about the players that play in section events that are PGA professionals? What about the players that are playing the mini tours that aren't advocates events, players that are playing overseas? There are a lot of minorities across the world that can vie for a chance to play in this championship, Will. I'm concerned about the selection criteria. Well, you know, given the fact that this is first year, Doug, to be honest, I don't give a damn about a selection criteria. Now, what I do appreciate is the fact that hopefully this can serve as a springboard or a precursor to maybe other big companies getting behind events and doing um, pre-qualifiers or qualifiers similar to this. Get one for the Wells Fargo. Get one for a uh, traveler championship, et cetera. So I, I don't really care. I don't, I don't care. It, it's the, right now for the first event, the people that are supposed to be there are the people that are supposed to be there. And hopefully we, we um, have some good outcome, good scores. And so hopefully, you know, whoever's there is, can make a cut and we can get going. So I don't really give a damn uh, what's the criteria on the first, first year. Well, I, I am excited that it is named in honor of John Shippen. A lot of folks don't know this name. Uh, John Shippen is a, a PGA professional, teaching professional that has been everywhere. He was at Shinnecock way back in the day. He also was at Aronimic uh, and then found his home at a course there in, in Jersey. Um, John Shippen was the first African-American to play in the United States Open. He actually played in six. He played from 1896 into, um, to 1902. So John Shippen was literally a pioneer and a trailblazer. So to be finally recognized for his contributions to the game of golf, I'm very pleased, Will, that, that he's going to get that credit and his name will continue to live on and people will wonder who who John Shippen was and, and what did he do. So a uh, big shout out to the folks at Rocket Mortgage for for their um, their investment. And, 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 and shout and shout, yeah, that would say shout out to Rocket Mortgage for being a presenting sponsor because it, you know there's a lot of companies out there who are trying to figure out how to navigate some of the diversity needs uh, surrounding the country and you know Rocket Mortgage stepped up and, and and did a good thing here so definitely kudos to Rocket Mortgage yeah definitely want to give a shout out to uh, to Summer Woods who co-founded the Woods and Watts Effect uh, that is uh, a part of this event and she's really leading this effort so big shout out to Summer uh, Summer Woods. Will, it is that time. You know what time I'm talking about. It's the Shake of the Week. Four. We you saw got? it at the Dell match play. Look, this whole situation with Kevin Na. And Kevin Na told Dustin Johnson, nah, homie. Dustin Johnson hit a putt, went four inches from the hole. He actually conceded himself. Dustin's like, I'm the number one player in the world. Let me go ahead and get this, bro. Like, look, I'm not, I don't care about you. I don't care about them. I'm going to go ahead and take it. He, he tried to take it from Kevin. 
And I don't think Kevin was having it. And matter of fact, we know Kevin wasn't having it because Kevin's like, it's funny in the video, Dustin kind of strides off with his little like swagger. You know how Dustin got that wave when he walked? Like, so he's waving off, going off to the next team. And Kevin's like, hey, no, nah, come on back here on this green right here where I'm at. Hey, look, dude, you didn't, you didn't do what you were supposed to do. I didn't give no. you nothing. I'll let you have it now. But understand, moving forward, we, this ain't about to be a thing in this match. So shout out to Kevin Nye for bossing up against world number one Dustin Johnson. I, 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 uh, I definitely give the nod to Kevin for doing that. That's I like right. That. I like that. Nah. Um, my shank of the week goes to, I got to give a big back, a uh, bit of a backstory. Mm -mm. Um, this individual player, uh, father reached out to you and I via Twitter and said, I quote, Trey Valentine deserves an exemption. If others won't say it, his, his dad damn sure will. He's got the resume, junior golf, division one college and skill set to do better than a DFL, Delta Foxtrot Lima. Well, Trey Valentine did get a uh, exemption into the Corn Ferry event this past week. And if we look at the reverse leaderboard, he tied for a fifth. And I'm just not sure this was the way to do it, Mr. Valentine. Mr. Valentine, you and I are cool. I love you. You know that. You are my guy. Trey Valentine is my boy. We talk often. But airing Doug and I out to think we can solve the exemption problems amongst black players on via social media is not the way to go. He had his opportunity. Trey had his opportunity. Therefore, maybe you were wrong. But he did not finish dead effing last. So... Kudos to you. You knew that. You saw that. You envisioned that. But my shank of the week goes to Mr. Valentine, the father of Trey Valentine. <laughs> and there you have it. That's this week's shank of the week. It's going to Dustin Johnson as well as Mr. Valentine. Sorry, y'all. Y'all earned it. We didn't pick it. You did it. That's not on us. Nobody is exempt on Beyond the Fairway shank of the week. Hey, as always, thank you so much for rocking with us here on Beyond the Fairway Podcast, NBC Sports Golf Channel. Uh, be sure to subscribe, listen, follow all listening platforms. We are available Beyond the Fairway on Instagram. Hit us up, slide in the DMs, ask questions, let us know what you're feeling like. Let us know what you think your shank of the week is. We want to know. Hey, for exclusive videos and content, hit that IG page. And um, we out of here, baby. We'll see you next week. Shipman's Invitational. I know that. <laughs>